Now, new strike laws will be passed for essential services covering rail, ambulance and border security staff to avoid disruptions over Christmas. Let's get more from our chief political correspondent, John Craig. John, it's great to have you with us. So look, uh, this news broke uh, just uh, 10, or, 10 or so minutes ago. Uh, what more do we know? The Prime Minister says we're doing everything in our power to stop unions derailing Christmas for millions of people. We can't go on relying on short-term fixes, including calling in our armed forces or civil servants. Well, let's be crystal clear on what's happening here. Sunak's government, not content with stripping back our right to protest and locking millions out of the electoral process, now wants to rob millions of public sector workers of their democratic right to strike, to force them to work against their will and allow them to be sacked if they refuse. It's unthinkable, unworkable and almost certainly illegal. And even worse, the government is willing to outright lie to the public to get away with it. They're, they're present in France, in Italy, in Spain. It's a statement the Prime Minister has now made in Parliament many times. We are joining countries across continental Europe and having minimum safety uh, laws. He's also sent out members of his government to repeat it. Lots of other European countries have these. So when people say it's undemocratic, it is something that they have in France, they have in Italy, they have in Spain. But what the Prime Minister wants is for teachers, nurses, doctors, firefighters, rail and border staff to be sacked if they refuse to comply with minimum service levels during industrial action. That is not the case in France, Italy and Spain. So what Sunak is planning is dramatically different. They're, they're present in France, in Italy, in Spain. And there are many other differences too. The minimum service legislation in France has never been deployed for transport strikes, but that's set to be the case in the UK. And that's not all. In France, minimum service levels are agreed through negotiations with trade unions. But the government's Minimum Service Act will actually allow it to decide statutory minimum service levels without negotiation with trade unions, and then impose it on them, forcing people to work against their will robbing them of their democratic right to withdraw their labour and allowing them to be sacked if they refuse. The entire country should be outraged. A number of trade unions have said that this um, will affect their members' human rights. What do you say to that? Look, I don't think that's, that's right. But the Joint Committee on Human Rights has found the government's Anti-Strike Act fails to meet the UK's human rights obligations. We clearly have a problem with human rights law in this country that is making it difficult for us to achieve our objectives. They don't even try to hide it anymore. But in the past, we, we can measure ourselves by actions. What have we done on this side of the house? We've introduced new powers to curb disruptive protests. We're protecting public services against undisrupted strike action, Mr Speaker. Well, for the avoidance of doubt, that was the UK Prime Minister actually boasting to Parliament and cheering MPs that he's just robbed millions of workers of their democratic right to strike and stripped back the public's right to protest about it. Striking workers don't benefit from strikes. Seriously? Without our trade unions and the workers willing to back them with strike action when needed, yes, strike action, we wouldn't have a minimum wage, maternity and paternity rights, pension provision, holiday and sickness entitlements, victories which have benefited every single person in this country. Workers everywhere must now stand together. We cannot allow a single worker to be sacked for defending their pain conditions. I know the entire trade union movement will rally behind any worker sacked for exercising their fundamental right to strike.